Sarah. Hi, what's up? What's up? <laughs> hey, doing well. Welcome, welcome to Art Talk Sunday. Proper Thank you so much for having me again. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Happy Easter. You too. Thank you. <laughs> my pleasure. My pleasure. How's your day so far? Good. Got some lunch uh, during the the break between the first live and this one. <laughs> so, hey, for sure. Hey, good. we got to mention that. What you got for lunch? Yeah. Oh, pollo tropical. <laughs> She got that whole chicken. She eating good. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. uh-huh. How about uh-huh. you? Hey, um, I had just made it to Orlando, so I'm with friends awesome. and family members right now. So I'm just grateful to make it there. So um got my uncle cooking on the grill. So you know, after this, Ooh. I'm like, oh my god, so good. For sure, you already know. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Wow. So to cap off what we left off last time. Um, we will, I mentioned that we both attended this scholarship organization mm-hmm. called Funds for Art. Mm-hmm. And that was the first time I met you when we met each other out there. Mm-hmm. I would like you to give them a recap of how it went. Mm-hmm. Me? Yes. I would like cool, to give cool, you cool. a recap. Yeah. So um, basically, we both got uh, an, oppor- an opportunity to showcase and actually sell some of our work. Um, so that's where we kind of first met and started talking a little bit. Um, it was really cool to see everyone's artwork um, showcased. Uh, sorry, my dog just did something. <laughs> but um, okay, okay, she's good. But um, <laughs> and and that's when we started talking and, and showcasing our art and even selling some of our work. You had prints. I remember you had your sweatshirts, which I think you're still selling. If I yes, I sure Correct? is. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Correct, correct. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> Um, so it was really cool to have that opportunity um, and to meet you there and to see what kind of work you did and just the variety of work that was there um, in general. So yeah, that was really cool. Definitely. My pleasure. And I'm glad yeah. to meet you there. And that was just a wonderful day. It was just breathtaking. Um, the scenery, um, I still remember to this day, just going up there on the elevator. and once It was it- gorgeous. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a pit- penthouse vibe. Yeah, definitely. It definitely we were super high up. Ooh. Carrying all of our artwork up there, that was pretty fun. Truly, yeah. uh huh, uh huh. <laughs> and gonna be plenty more of those events. Yeah, for plenty sure. More. So, it's for sure, what have you been up to lately? After that, even. Um. So recently, um, i I'm a freshman uh, at Maryland Institute College of Art. I'm attending virtually because of the pandemic. Um, even though I had the option to go this semester in person. Um, classes were still online, and if I couldn't have used the campus's facilities, my personal perspective was like, why would I go? <laughs> why would I pick up and leave then? Right. So um, I've been making work here in, in Miami, um, Florida, and uh, right now I've, I've just finished a whole uh, fibers thing. Um, this is actually a piece that I did for my fibers class. It's a tapestry um, wow. made of upcycle, upcycled, um, like recycled strips of fabric. And this is actually um, plastic like insulation that you get in food packages. Uh, so it has like a cool like metallic look, even though it's plastic, it's pretty fun. So. Wow, yeah. I'm glad that you brought that and you was able to showcase it with us. That's beautiful. You worked with this before or is this something that you recently got into? Yeah, sorry, you froze for me for a sec. Oh, I froze? I, it's okay, with, you're okay. back. Okay, cool. <laughs> Um, I was asking you, is that a mm-hmm. medium that you worked with in the past or just something that you were introduced to in college? So I've always had a history of working with um, fibers and uh, mostly sewing, but this is actually my first actual attempt at a tapestry. Um, we had to build the loom from scratch. So we were hammering, you know, wood pieces together and then stringing it all up um, for the warp uh, so that you could weft it through. And yeah. um, it, it, that part for me was one of the most challenging um uh parts of it but then once you kind of get into the groove of of just over under over under um it was actually really nice and cathartic so this is my first actual tapestry but it was it was a pretty good time <laughs> yeah yes yeah, sir that is beautiful continue to keep thank up you. the amazing work thank you so much my pleasure and for those that are currently viewing this instagram live chat if you have a question for me or sarah please feel free to drop them in the comment section below um, especially if you are an emerging artist, you could have various questions ranging from how to start a business to what's your favorite medium and why you prefer it or ask beginner type questions like how do I get into art will be 
grateful and glad to answer those amazing questions as well. Mm-hmm. Definitely. For sure. For sure. And we, <laughs> uh, we got to give a huge shout out to Sia underscore T. She said hello from London, the UK. Oh, wow. Whoa. Hi. <laughs> yes, yes. Nice. From the, from the States all the way to the UK. Got to shout out to my Crazy. UK brothers. Hey, <laughs> definitely. My pleasure. My pleasure. That's live. So I have a couple questions that I would like to ask. Mm-hmm. Um, I would like to know what inspired you to create art? Um, oh, that's honest. That is a difficult question um, okay. because usually when I make art, I start working with the material and kind of go from there. Um, so, so that's just something that you know, um, it, it's letting the material kind of inform me and what kind of narrative I might want to create with it um, and right. how I can interact with it and how potentially other people could or would want to interact with it. Um, so that's it. it. Sometimes it'll have a basis of creating like some kind of story. I know that all art does, um, whether that's um, implicit or explicit in the way that I present it. Um, but a lot of my inspiration comes from um, other artists um, who are either my own peers, um, part of the freshman class in Micah. We have some incredibly talented um, people that I'm so lucky to to be working with um, and around. Um, and also from a more established artists like Anna Mendieta, um, Mika Rottenberg, and Ida Applebrook, just to name a few of like my top um, favorite artists. So yeah, how about you? Are there any like specific artists that inspire your work? Yes, there's a couple of artists that inspire my work. Uh, we got Marlene Cohn, one of the founders from the Fund for Art Design. Like I knew about mm-hmm. her around the time when I was getting familiar with the art scholarship. And mm-hmm. I also got Cahill Riley, the African-American painter that make these huge life-size murals, paintings of iconic or regular everyday Black folks doing iconic Renaissance painting um, gestures and what he, make his artwork unique as well. I remember it straight um, from like 2013 going to Art Basel, um, taking a look at his artwork for the first time in person. Um, that's when I was in high school during the time as well. Mm-hmm. Um, my first time going to Art Basel, and I know for sure that painting right there just shot like a wave through my head. Like, that's amazing. You could do this and even better. So that what inspired me and to create art, especially after that, because like every now and then I'm like, art is cool, but for me to say like, I want to create something, if not bigger than that, mm-hmm. you know, of course better. So that, yeah. those are the artists that inspired me. And uh, um, of course, I'm really into the abstract work as well. And you know, the classic Renaissance painting uh, that been taught at a very young age, I'm going yeah. to like elementary school and they give me the history of art. And I was always informed about it. So those those artists in particular inspired me to create art. That's really cool. A pleasure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> wow. Um, I would like to also know, um, I remember looking at your artwork in the past or the 2020. Um, mm-hmm. I would like to know, because I saw like a various range from your artwork as well, what you mentioned with the fabric and mm-hmm. the introduction of you actually work on designer like you actually create mm-hmm. and pick out these fabrics and put them together and you do runways with them yeah yeah so um i was fortunate enough to be a part of um my high school's fashion design program i later on realized that fashion design itself wasn't really for me i, I wasn't as interested in the industry but i still do enjoy the process of creating garments Um, And my most recent um, collection was my senior collection. It's not the one with the white quilted fabric. It's the one that has all those like colors, like wavy. I don't know. I don't expect you to remember it. Okay. Um, Okay. But um, that was kind of for my senior collection. And I actually uh, digitally like just on Photoshop designed that print um, and then printed that fabric out on like spandex on um chiffon on cotton just to like have a range of um materials to work with and then i kind of uh got a fake suede fabric and just put it all together i was i was really inspired kind of by what your um the renaissance era of of clothing i guess you would say yeah. um, just kind of the poofiness of it i love that wow <laughs> so that was pretty fun to do yeah truly and the fact that you're able to um, I'll continue what you were mentioning. 
Um, mm-hmm. What is very interesting too, when it comes to all forms of art, and I can see, are you, were you inspired by like the drapery, the way how we can have this particular fabric and then have all these curves and you can see yeah. like, the vibrancy. Like, how how yeah, did that definitely. come along? So um, I learned both drapery and pattern making. Pattern making I usually use for, you know, basic cutout shapes that I can maybe embellish a little bit depending on the size or like the volume um, that I want. And then drapery is usually for um, like stretch knits or uh, stretchier fabrics and tight fit fabrics. Right, um, right. So I was working with a lot of stretch, super stretchy material, which is a lot harder to work with than I realized when I first approached this project. So Correct. These are probably like the trickiest um, things for me to do. Um, so yeah, I definitely did a mix of uh, draping on a mannequin, sometimes on my own body if my mannequin already has something else on it. Um, right. Just a whole a whole mess of things, but uh, eventually it all kind of comes together um, into hopefully conveying one concept. So yeah. Wow, I'm glad you was introduced to just the designer world and you oh, learned too. a little bit. My pleasure. And you learned about the industry as well. What are mm-hmm. like, um, what are advice would you give to the emerging artists that's listening to this that are interested in designer a particular fabric or a clothing set? Especially what you mentioned, like you create these full life size dresses. That that's that's skills right there. Like I'm with, a, I'm with, I'm with like the basics, like the t-shirts, hoodies. But I'm putting my <laughs> two cents in. But this right here, like this, you gotta actually tailor people to their liking as well. You gotta mm-hmm. present it. Yeah. Um. So I guess for emerging designers, since I don't really consider myself one, I guess I'll give advice that I probably would have given when I considered myself one. Correct. Um which is just allow yourself to get as much out of a project, even if it is for like a specific clientele or a specific audience, make sure that if if you don't like it, your clientele will not like it uh, kind of a deal. So that's one thing as a designer, as an artist, stay flexible, like allow yourself um, to try and feel everything that you are compelled to do or compelled to work with. I've done printmaking, I've done painting, I've done oil pastel, I've done, you know, uh, garment design, anything I can get my hands on to figure out what would best convey what I'm trying to to say to the right. world. Um, so let yourself do that. And, and uh, depending on whatever resources it is you have, you can make art out of absolutely anything. I promise anything. So, Facts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Facts. Straight from the one that only Sarah herself. And those were <laughs> powerful keys that you mentioned. The fact that I I truly believe this as well since we're young. Um, for those artists out there as well, don't lock yourself into one medium. Like If you're mm-hmm. very good at it, cool. Um, what you mentioned, trying out printmaking, all these different types of medium. And you get like the feel for it. And then once you want to develop your unique def- um, distinctive style, then, you know, we got time. We, we, we really truly got time. Um, we can have decades of experience and that's when we can hone our skills with this particular medium. So that's a very powerful advice for the emerging artists. My play, yeah, I Absolutely. appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Audio.